we were just talking about um we met via martin clout the traeger traeger bodywork yes. guy i was i was uh, yeah i was on his table and he was saying to me oh nadine there is this amazing man that you should meet and like go and meet him i think you two i don't know but you two i think you've got a synergy that would be great and uh, and actually he was right i went and had some singing lessons with you sorted out my middle voice which was fantastic you've become such a great friend and colleague and you know i've just loved getting to know you you know but how you know how did you find martin sessions that traeger bodywork it's interesting isn't it well they're really great and and uh what was wonderful about it is that he introduced to introduced me to you which opened up a whole new part of my life again which was <laughs> fantastic um but martin's work is is brilliant because it deals with psychophysiological work that means working on the emotions of mind and the body because um, Traeger suggested about 60% of illnesses are psychosomatic and therefore why not work on the mind and the body as well and they do with hands-on work they change your subtly they change your perceptions of yourself and your body and how you use it which yeah. really makes a change in your life so. Absolutely. So, and, and meeting you out of that was was really brilliant because it did really change the direction of my life quite a lot. Oh, well, that's how I feel about you. So thank you so much. So it's 9.01. Good morning, everybody. It's 9.01. And where are we now? We're on Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm Nadine Benjamin. I'm an intuitive Verdi soprano. I am a certified NLP mind coach and a certified high performance coach. I'm a healer and I am an international professional opera singer and I love it. And I'm on 12 week safe at home. I can't leave my house at all. So I thought while I was here, I'd share some of my coaching knowledge, but also share some of the wonderful people that are in my life with lots to share with you too. And so this morning we have the wonderful Michael Harper. Michael Harper is a singer, a vocal consultant and singing teacher. He has sung opera, oratorio and new music internationally. He teaches singing at the Royal Northern School of Music in Manchester and has private studios in London. Now, as I always, always say to everybody, we are not medical doctors and we are not um, psychiatrists. So if you need that kind of um, help, we encourage it. Remember, I love connecting, championing and celebrating people. So, yes, we're going to celebrate you, Michael. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, Nadine. I, like you, have been in the house this whole time. <clears throat> I fortunately have a garden to go to and I love gardening. So I don't feel in any way stuck. It's actually given me an opportunity to to work on projects that I can't work on when I'm dragging suitcases across the country or <laughs> getting on flights and you know hurting my arm and my back from dragging these suitcases. So I feel in some ways relieved to actually be sitting still for a change. Yes, um, I, I have to say, I, I really identify with that. I feel exactly the same way and I feel very blessed to be safe at home. Mm. I know that there are others that are not in that situation. And today I want to just send out, and I know you would and everybody here would just like to send out our love and light to every single one of them and just pray for their safety and, and, and their healing and their joy. Um, hi, Susan. Yeah. Hey, Lena. Lovely to see you both. Good morning. Thank you for being here. So, Michael, without further ado, please tell us, like, how did you get into singing so we can learn a little bit more about you? Ah, well, so, Nadine, I'm going to ask you one thing um, before we start. I am, I was born and raised in the south of the States, <laughs> and we have a way of telling stories that starts with the ball of yarn and then the ball of yarn just rolls across the floor and the cat gets it and drags it through the house and you don't know where the end of it is but we do and so i need you to sort of bring the ball of yarn back to me sometimes so that everybody doesn't lose the thread Okay. Don't worry, that is my job as your presenter here. I have no problem with that. I will be bringing you back. Time is time. Okay. Isn't it? Exactly. We call it going around the houses, you know. So, yeah, so just so anyway. to know a little bit about how you got into singing. 
Okay. Okay. So um, when I was little, I mean, I sang in church. And someone asked me when I was teaching at one of the universities in the States, they said, so how did you get into singing? I said, well, I'm from Virginia. And if you're from Virginia, everybody goes to church, whether you want to or not. So I started in church. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. I <laughs> so, you know, yes, we sang in Sunday school. And, you know, my mother and my brother and I, who were all singers, used to sit around the table and sing gospel music together. And it was wonderful because my mother had a beautiful voice. And when I sing in my countertenor voice, that's whose voice I hear because it was very pure and clear, my mother's voice. Mm. So, um, and then when I was when I was in the fourth grade, I had this teacher, Helen Palmer Howard, and uh, she suggested to me that I was gonna sing in front of all of the school, the, all of the fourth graders and fifth graders. And I was nine years old and I was like, I don't wanna do that. You know, I was really shy. I really didn't wanna have anything to do with people, just mm. hide and be, you know, the, smart boy and so i got up on this stage and i sang you'll never walk alone i don't know how well i sang it but i sang you'll never walk alone and everyone seemed to like it and i thought when i was standing up there oh this is all right i kind of like this <laughs> and uh <laughs> and then she carried on being my mentor all the way through graduate school uh, when she died of cancer sadly but she was my mentor the whole time she arranged for me to have lessons with um with a teacher in Washington, D.C. She would take me there once a month mm -hmm. and we'd have lessons over two days with a teacher from um, Catholic University in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. and, and then I went on to undergraduate school studying engineering and someone heard me sing and said, oh, you should come sing in our choir at the, at the church, we have some paid solos. And then he said, oh, you should come and audition for the music department. There was a pretty good music department at Virginia Commonwealth University. And, uh, and so I went and auditioned and they accepted me and I changed my my degree from engineering, which my parents wanted me to do, <laughs> and changed it to music, which wow. is what I wanted to do. Wow. And so um and and then it went on. I got scholarship and then I went on to the College Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati, yeah. and then got scholarship and came to England. Wow. And you know, cutting a long story short. Yeah. And then I just carried on. Philip Barnett is saying, hi Nadine, great to see Michael with whom I sang in the singing circle at the Royal Opera House. He was electrifying. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, Marjorie, Hello, Philip. <laughs> and Marjorie is saying, morning, great analogy of a ball of twine, a sign of a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so you, you, you know, you had a career as a singer. But then you started doing yes. um, singing, teaching, and vocal consulting. How did you get into that? Well, when I was in undergraduate school, um, I think I've always been a teacher. You know, my fourth grade teacher I was just telling you about. Yeah. She told me when I was a kid, she said, um, you're going to either be a teacher or a preacher. And I hated that because I wanted to be a singer or a singer. You know? yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> And you know the old the old thing that if you those who can't teach, and I think that's completely not true. I think those who who can teach, mm. because I think teaching is a very special thing to do, yeah. and um, yeah. and that you must learn how to do it before you can teach it. Yes, absolutely. And so, so you know, even if we don't necessarily love doing it on stage all the time, because I'm a very reluctant performer, I'll tell you, but <laughs> I love to teach it. I love to teach it. I love to get to help people realize themselves. So I was in my undergraduate school and we had to take pedagogy classes. And at the end of the class, my pedagogy teacher said, you're the only one who's ready to do this now. So I started teaching in the community school. And then oh. I went to graduate school at Cincinnati. I taught in the community school there. So I kept my teaching up the whole time. So I've been teaching, you know, um, probably nearly 30 years. I don't know how that's happened because I'm only 21, but I've been <laughs> teaching nearly 30 years. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, um, so I... Um, so I uh, kept, carried on um, and had a few people come to me when I, when I was in London mm -hmm. and then just gradually built it and, um, and, um, and started teaching in Norway through my student Steve yeah. at the Opera House there and just various things and just built, people asked me, will you come teach? 
I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go there and teach, but I did. I learned so much from teaching people who weren't opera singers, people yeah. who were learning from not even, even knowing how to match a note. And, you know, at first it was painful because you're used to in conservatory having people who can do everything you want them to do already mm -hmm. but having to pe teach people who couldn't who didn't even have a concept of what yeah. you wanted them to do was a real learning experience and i think that's how i've learned to sort of be so microscopic in my teaching which is painful for my students sometimes by the way <laughs> Claire, Pen <laughs> Claire Pendleton Holy is saying, morning, I agree with Michael, teaching is great to do, but you must learn how to do it. And I and I totally agree with that. I, you know, I, I, I would never call myself a teacher, but I am a great coach. So I think there is a complete <laughs> distinction. I can work with someone's performance about what they're thinking about and, you know, how they're interpreting something. But for me, teaching someone to sing is not my bag you know <laughs> but I but you have so many other talent and you can sing and you can sing and you can sing and that's really important <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much so you know you we you have this subject matter around sustaining electricity online I mean bring us into that world talk to us about it well I've been in a in quite a few meetings um, since we've had to go online full time. And, you know, I've been talking to my friends on FaceTime or at least one friend on FaceTime and some friends who come on Skype who won't show me their faces. And, and I get used to all of that, but I've been doing this and I even practiced teaching online a few years ago. I made some of my student, students guinea, guinea pigs. And I said, well, let's try this online teaching because I saw so many charlatans online doing teaching and i thought hmm, not <laughs> sure about this let me see if i <laughs> let me see if i can do this mm. and i must say it was painful it was painful because we didn't know anything about it mm. and, and these guys who were doing it online who didn't necessarily know anything about vocal pedagogy they had really sharp looking studios they had the lighting right they had all of these angles from this way and angles from that way and you know switching angles and then showing you this chart of you know um this and this is how you do it and they could show you films and i thought oh i don't have any of that and my teaching looks rather boring and of course there then was the delay mm. there was delay and i was trying to play as badly as i play i was trying to play the accompaniments for my students <laughs> on the other side not really realizing at that time knowing it but not realizing it that there was going to be a lag between sight and sound mm. because sound travels much more slowly than light. Mm. And therefore, it. and I don't know anything about the engineering of the wires and all of that stuff that, that makes it even more difficult. Yeah. But I'm sure that someone's working on that problem. Someone yeah. somewhere is working on that problem. And that great thing is that Though we're in what some people call a crisis, I call an opportunity, yeah. we're having an opportunity to learn all of these new things. Yeah. So what I mean by that electricity online is that we have to learn to communicate as if we're in a room together. Mm. So, so some of the things I can say that are missing, mm. the, the things that are missing is that people are taking uh, a back seat mm. to themselves when they come online. Mm. So they're taking passive mode. Um, they're not using eye contact. So mm. eye contact is really important. Now, how do you do that? And I was talking with a friend about this the other day, mm. because if you're um, looking into a camera, mm. at whom are you looking? <laughs> and how do they know that you're looking at them when you're on camera? Yeah. So actors have spent many years you know um uh, perfecting this skill yeah, yeah you know they can look at you on the camera and make you think that they're looking right into your eyes and yeah. saying really lovely things to you and, <laughs> and <laughs> so so how do we do that and uh how do we keep the energy in our voices that carry across those wires through this artificial system to 
to engage the people on the other side and bring them in. So I tell my students all the time when they're trying to push out their voices, what are you doing? You don't need to push. What you need to do is draw them in, draw yeah. them in. And so, so how do we do that? And I think it takes absolute skill. It takes absolute skill. And that skill requires practice just like anything else. Mm. So if we are if we are going to be effective online as leaders and as followers, mm. we must learn to be on the screen. Yeah, it's right. we have to learn to act for television. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. And and I think that there are a lot of people who think that they can just come to a meeting. <laughs> you hear what I mean? Yeah. You see what I mean? And how is that getting anything done in a meeting? Yeah. Now, this will take a lot of cultural refi refinement. Mm. So this is fantastic. I, I thought, now, what do I know about charisma and electricity online? Because that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about charisma. Mm. And some people naturally have that. Um, it's, it's Some people are naturally ingenuous, mm. if you mm. know what I mean. So mm. ingenuous. It's it's that thing that Parsifal has the 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 wise fool or you you see it in a lot of great singers a lot of great actors they don't have to do anything yeah and it happens you know or it yeah. looks like they don't have to do anything <laughs> um, so I was watching this guy last night um, I thought well let me Google the wonderful thing is we have Google. Yes. And you know, when I was when I was little, we didn't have Google. We had to go to the library. The library was closed or you had to go when you in the middle of a class and you could go or when you got there, the book that you wanted was missing or put in the wrong place or so dusty that they put it on the bottom shelf or removed it. So they, you know, these when my kids come to class and they're talking to me about uh, when they're telling me, oh, I didn't get the score yet. I'm like, you guys have no excuse. You have IMSLP, you have all of these things online. They send it to your door. We had to go get it and then copy it and the copy machine wasn't working or you didn't have the right change, all of that sort of stuff. Now, so back to charisma. Oh, you sound, so like, this, you sound like my other teacher, Anthea Parrish Jack. <laughs> And I can see oh, the degree with you. So you have all of these 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 things at your disposal. So I was I Googled last night um uh, charisma online and this guy Florian Mook came mm -hmm. up and it, and he has uh has uh uh, uh he's uh, like in Toastmasters. International, and if you know Toastmasters, are yes, they do, they MC yes, and things like that? Yeah. So um, he he's he's wonderful. He's funny, and uh, he talks about boosting your charisma. And it's called Florian Muck, uh, M U E C K. He's from Germany, and boosting and he's really funny. And he talks about how to be online, how to set yourself up, and um, and I can talk about some of those things in a minute. So it's really really important to to a be yourself, Absolutely. be yourself. Absolutely. So exactly who you would be in that meeting, yeah. in a room, be yourself. Now you might be a follower, but that doesn't mean you get to be passive. Yes. That means you yeah. have to listen. So what Nadine's doing right now, she's nodding her head. She's listening to me. She's showing me that she's listening. I mean, Nadine, you don't have to keep nodding your head. I I prompted you to do that with a with a poker through this through. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> dear one. <laughs> so so you have to you have to be present. You have to be present. I think about when I um, used to sing in church um, as a soloist, and some mornings I just didn't feel like being there. Mm. However, if I engaged, so I listened from the beginning to the end to the thread of the story, when it came my time to sing, mm. I was present in that moment. Yeah. So, you know, when you, Get ready to go online. Get ready. Yes. Get ready. Yes. So I, that means know what your room looks like. Yeah. yeah. 
know what it looks like behind you is that how i want to present myself is my hair ready did i wash my face this morning am i still wearing my bathrobe and my slippers because you're going to feel different those than if you dress absolutely it's that it's that, it's that it's high performance that. habit of getting yourself exactly. i have a complete routine i am fully dressed i've got my besties on yeah. i feel great yeah. and that means then i can really engage with you and with the audience because we're not the only ones here that's right. That's right. You don't know who's there and who's going to be seeing you online. You don't know if somebody's, well, you can tell if someone's recording most of the time, but you don't always know if someone's recording. So that's you for posterity's sake, you know, and you need to make sure that the you that you want to present is there. Absolutely. That doesn't have to be a fake you. That has to be, a, that can be a real you, but it depends on what kind of, uh, there's a story about Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth Zuderstrom, who was having a masterclass with a young lady. And the young lady said, now, do you think I need to show more cleavage in this dress? And uh, Elizabeth Zuderstrom responded, well, that depends on what kind of career you want to have, my dear. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got to decide what kind of career online you want to have <laughs> and make sure that you dress and you present yourself accordingly. Um, so, so all of those things contribute to electricity online. Yeah. How am I engaging the world and how are they engaging me? Yeah. Now, you might have somebody on the other line, on the other end, who's not like Nadine, who's not electric, who's not present, who's not responding. Mm. But that doesn't stop you from being you. Absolutely. And... And so I learned in the Claw Leadership Program, um, which is a wonderful uh, leadership training course here in the UK. And um, I learned that leadership comes in all sorts of forms. And I remember the biggest lesson, uh, there were two. One was this guy, after lunch, they, they fed us really well. And after lunch, we had this guy come in. He was in a gray suit, gray hair. Everything about him was gray. And I thought, and he was a nice enough looking man, but he was gray. And he just looked like your boring professor. And I thought, oh, this is not good postprandial digestion material going on here. So, so, so he started to speak and I thought, oh no, this is going to be long. And then he started slowly telling these very wry jokes and then telling us stories. And he was magnificent. He was absolutely magnificent. But rarely did his facial expression change, but he was so funny. And he drew us into um, the litigation side of the art by telling us stories. Mm -hmm. So leadership and charisma can look very, very different. I looked up, at, can, do you have a question for me, Nadine, right now? Because I know that I was like... You can do the last bit, and then I'm going to get into your tips. So go, go, go. Okay, okay so I wanted to just say what charisma was because, um, you know, charisma is uh, compelling attractiveness or charm that can inspire devotion in others or a divinely conferred power or talent, if you believe in divinely. So however that means to you. We don't know how to describe it. We don't know how to make it, but we can polish it up a little bit. And we can draw out of people that which is natural in them. And I think that's what charisma is. If you can draw out of people, if they're not too distressed or too destroyed by their experience, if you can draw out of them what is natural in them. Absolutely. And then I finally want to say... That's the definition of education as well. That is what we do yeah, when we exactly. coach someone or when we teach someone. All, all we're there is to facilitate the drawing out of what is already within them. That's right. That's right. So so I was thinking early this morning. Oh, we lost him. Looks like we've lost Michael. I, we don't know why. Hopefully he'll come back in in a second but um, we'll just wait for him to come back into the, the feed. I'm sure he will in a while. But isn't that really interesting, everybody, what he's talking about, about literally 
everybody just having that charisma. And now look, I'm in that position where we've lost Michael from the feed and and this is the things that can happen. And it's about how we stay focused and stay alive. And look, here he is again, and he's back in the stream. Yeah, we don't know don't how know what happened. To do. But yeah, that's what I was just saying. Like we you know we lost you from the from the from the the, the stream, and actually it's that thing is yeah. anything can happen, but we've just got to stay alive. And oh, hang on. So I'm on. I'm on so I'm going to stop on. See if we can try to leave. Oh, he's gone again. Oh, bless. So he spoke about um, also a high performance habit there. One of the high performance habits he talked about, which I firmly believe in, is how we present ourselves before we start. It's really, really important that we become ready for who we are. <laughs> Let's see. Apologies, everybody. I hope you can bear with us. Let's see if that's better. Is that any better? And here we go again. <laughs> it's that thing. Here we go again. That charisma, that aliveness, staying calm inside these kind of situations. And they happen to each and every single one of us. So the other high performance habit that I was going to talk about anyway, until we get Michael back into the stream, is we have these hourly, and I mean hourly lessons sometimes, we're teaching people for an hour, or we're teaching um, somebody for 90 minutes. And one of the things, another high performance habit is to make sure that we hydrate, that we move, and that we breathe. So you've had a 50 minute session and you've you've your lesson or the thing that you're conducting is an hour long and what we want to make sure is that you as the person presenting you as the person speaking you as the person showing up is fully engaged that's, that's, that's my song. Okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me? I'm on two screens and I'm not sure how to get rid of the without getting rid of both. Ah, okay. Can you put your head back? Yeah, I've opened it. But if I leave one, then I leave both. I'll, 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 I'll shut it down and then I'll come back. Michael Carter, thank you for that. Really, really appreciate it. But the thing that I was saying again is around making sure that you yourself are ready and set up. So you must hydrate, you must breathe, and you must stretch. One of the breathing uh, patterns that was taught the other day by Brian Colbert was to breathe in through the nose for four, to hold for four, and then to breathe out for eight. And so we can try that together. Let's see if we get Michael back in again this time. We've completely lost Michael now. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. We'll back. But I'm just going to do this breathing <laughs> exercises. Exercise. So, okay. yeah. So you can breathe. You can, um, yeah. So you can breathe. You can stretch, and then you can move. And the breathing exercise is four in through the nose. You hold for four, and then you come out through the nose for eight. You breathe in for four through the nose. Hold for four and then out for eight. And then in for four again. Hold for four and then out for eight. And there we just put us back in the room. 
<laughs> so these things happen, don't they? They happen. They really do. They happen. Yeah, and we and, have and, wonderful people here. My school, Kakuchi Young, it was lovely. And Gabby was saying, there were cool. birds singing. <laughs> you know, everybody, and, and we know what you were saying, Michael, and this is where we still need to keep our charisma. It's still where we just need yeah. to keep all rolling and what you're showing there and what we show together is that form of resilience you know that yeah. not giving up that keep coming back looking for solutions looking for answers and really you know just yeah being in our power rather than feeling like we're being yeah. imitated you know so please right. come on carry on what you were saying yeah so i was just saying i was thinking about the ways we communicate and uh from um from you know early times, I was thinking, you know, we were all walking on fours, and then one day somebody decided I'm going to walk on, see if I can walk on two feet. So they got up and they had these two ha these two paws free, and so they were sitting over there eating with their silverware, you know, having a nice meal while the others were grubbing and pulling their food along on the floor, you know, getting it all dirty. And like, and everybody thought, oh, well, maybe I can eat with some silverware as well. <laughs> so, so we got on. And the only way of communicating in those days was <clears throat> and sniffing behind and, you know, sort of deciding whether you were going to procreate or not. Yeah. And then we got sort of, uh, oh, you can, you know, nudge, nudge. You can live in my cave with me or you can go along the savannah with me. <laughs> and then we got, you know, <laughs> then we got mm, mm, grunt, grunt. And, and it moved on and on. And we got writing and then you know, eventually hollers across the field or the mountains which yodeling probably comes out of and uh, drums and songs. And then we got into the 19th century and th things completely changed. And we got telegraphs and telephones later on. And, and uh, all of this stuff was amazing. I was thinking my grandfather was born in 1900 and he died in 76. Wow. He must have seen an extraordinary amount of things. And if he were living now, what he would have seen yeah. and you know then we got telephones and the radio and television and all of these things and every time they seem strange and probably the, some in the old generation thought well i'm not going to be bothered with that you know because you know like i don't have eye chat and all what well, it's not eye chat it's snapchat is it <laughs> yeah. and all of those things so and now and i remember seeing in the 1970s the show called Bewitched with Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they had like this this um, video phone that would come up from some of her warlock and witch, you know, relatives. And they'd come on this video phone. And you're like, yeah, right. We're going to be talking to each other, you know, in time on a video phone. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and, we and here we are yeah. talking to each other in time on a video phone. Yeah, yeah. On, yeah. on video. And so these things are oftentimes being tried out in military or government um, facilities way before we get them. And therefore some kind of communication that we don't need at that moment. But yeah. now we need it. And what we need to do is learn to adapt to it. You yeah. know, telephone calls are easy now on our mobile. I remember they used to be just for the elite. Like my friend was a really swish lawyer who used to call his wife on his mobile phone when he would take me home from choir rehearsal just to impress me i'm sure yeah. but it was really nice to be impressed by someone who had a phone a car phone yeah. and then we got mobile phones yeah. you know and every yeah. and i remember living in covent garden and seeing people walk along with these mobile phones yeah. and they were doing this on their mobile phone and talking to somebody else when they were walking along together and i said look at those stupid people walking along with each other and talking to somebody else it just doesn't make any sense does it and here <laughs> we are all doing it now <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and now we have this new opportunity to communicate. I don't want to do this forever because I want to be back in the room with people with that electricity happening, smelling the pheromones, you know, you know, deciding if I like that person, if I don't like that person, or if I don't like them, how I can get to like them by managing some things around. So all of those things I want back. But this is all we've got right now. So how do we do that? Yeah, so to give how us your tips. That? Give us your tips. Yeah. So I think your exercise of the breathing is excellent. Mm. Breathe. Yeah. Practice your breathing. Yeah, it's really Before important. you go on stage, because this mm. is like going on stage, yeah, yeah. warm up your voice. If you wake up in the morning, it's uh, like 
like yeah. that. Then you need to do something about that. Warm yeah. up the top, ah! warm up the, ah! you know, warm up the voice, get it going. Sing a song or something to your morning, to yourself in the morning. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I sometimes think, oh no, <laughs> do I have to do this? Yeah. And then I open the curtain, the sun shining or the rain's going, I feel how I'm going to be that day. Mm -hmm. But how do I get to the place from which I am to the place to which I need to be? Absolutely. And every opera singer, every performer knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. So we get up and we do something physical. So every morning, I can't go outside and go for a walk or go for a run. Mm -hmm. So I have to do some exercise on my top landing. Yeah. I have to go out for a walk in the garden. Between each between each um, lesson I'm teaching, because yeah. if I sit there all day going, yes, darling, that's good. Yes, yeah. My neck gets really tight, my shoulders get really tight, and my back starts to hurt. So mm -hmm. I've got to make sure I'm sitting in a comfortable position. All of this stuff you know. Yeah. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know, mm -hmm. just reminding you. And then yeah, in between, that, that common just, sense is not always common practice. So that's why no, people exactly. need to be reminded all the time. Exactly. Oh. So in between the sessions, Nadine, mm. I I walk up four, three or four flights of stairs Absolutely. two times, walk yeah. to the front of the house and to the back of the house, three or four flights of stairs. Now, you might not have three or four flights of stairs, but what you can do is walk around your apartment, pick up mm. things as you go, move them around, do stuff. Get yourself physical because that's going to keep your breath going and your blood flowing. And to think you need your blood flowing and your breath going. Yeah. Yes. So it's like the walk and talks when we when we do meetings. When you get up and walk, something that actually was that you really stuck on actually starts to move because your brain and your blood are activated. And because we're energy. So make sure you stay activated. Yeah, and because energy, we're, energy, yeah, we're energy, and we we are constantly moving. Even though we see ourselves okay. in physical form, we are molecules that are constantly moving. So you know, to reignite energy, we need to move energy. That's right. That's right. Be yourself. Absolutely. Be yourself. Be yourself. So if you're in a meeting and something isn't going right, now you have to gauge this depending on the type of meeting you're in. If you're just, you know, in the in the mail room and the chief executive is talking and you don't have anything to do with this new scheme that's going on, you might not want to speak, but you know, they might learn something from you as well. If you've got something intuitive going on and they need to hear it, you might get a job as the chief executive's assistant <laughs> or the new chief executive. So, so be yourself and speak your mind. You know, I sit in these meetings and, and I think, well, surely somebody else has something to say besides me, because I've just been saying, and, 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 but I'm a bit of the, one of those teacher's pets who said, teacher, teacher, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I've tried to change that. But be yourself and say yeah. what you think in those meetings. Engage, engage with people. Yeah. How many times in your life do you wish that you had? Yeah. You wish that you had. And all of those things, all of these things will make you more available, more electric, more charismatic online. Um, what is, be relaxed and be prepared. Yes. Be prepared for what you're doing. Because if you're prepared, go in five minutes before, 10 minutes before. Yeah. Find your space. Is your screen good? Yeah. Am I looking good? <laughs> Check yourself <laughs> Put some light on you. Yeah. Put you, some light on you. think that there is sun shining through my window, but I've got some extra artificial light on me. Yeah. You're on the stage. You're on the stage. You're on the screen. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up, you know? <laughs> You've got to get ready. <laughs> and then I, and then finally, I'd say, I say you need to ramp it up. Mm. You need to ramp it up. This is not just you know, going to the grocery store, pushing your cart along. This is not just um, sitting on your sofa in your slippers watching the television. Mm -hmm. You are engaging with people on an artificial device. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to feel you, you've got to be you and you've got to be you to the nth degree. Yeah. Oh, and I well, think that's 
<laughs> Michael, that's fabulous. And, you know, a shame we had that little foil ball in the middle, but that's what everybody's experience yeah. at the moment is loads of foil, foil balls. My friend was telling me the other day that they're an actual television company and they were like <laughs> 300 of them online or something and they all cut each other off. So, you know... <laughs> We're not the only one. It's happening. Like, <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, everywhere. I mean, the, the head of, exactly, the head of tech at ours the other day was talking to us all, and it started going, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I chatted in the chat box, it sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Some people thought it was funny, others were kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Again, you laugh about these things otherwise, no. It's it's not a problem. We have to take time. And if you get yourself stressed out about it, I mean, life has plenty of reasons to get stressed. Yeah. If you breathe, you'll get less stressed and you'll get more done. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Pat, to you. And thank you, Anthea, saying you've done great. And thank you for everybody that, you thank know, you, supported us in, like, getting back online and getting back into the groove. I really, really appreciated that. It's just what we do. We all come together to make something work. So, Michael, where can everybody find you? Yeah, so you can find me online on my uh, website. And Nadine, you have that somewhere because you're asking. www.michaelharper.com, isn't that Michael-harper.net. Michael oh. Or just look up Michael Harper Counter Tenor and you'll find me. Michael oh. Harper Counter Tenor. Yeah. Or on Royal Northern's website. But Michael I'll, Harper Counter Tenor. I'll, I'll put it in, in the comments as well, Michael. I'll put your website in the comments as well. Okay. Susan okay. Pentland. Also, look. Could listen to Michael all day, every day. Very interesting. Thanks both. Stay safe. Oh, very charming. Thank you very much. Yeah. But look up Florian Mook as well. M U E C K. He's a okay. Toastmaster, and he is funny and fabulous. Funny and we'll fabulous. And he, and he gives you... We'll also put that in the comment Sorry? section. We'll also put that in the comment section as well. Okay. okay? Okay. All right, thank you everybody for being here. Tomorrow we're going to have Philip Barnett, another artist in creation. Um, Philip Barnett is going to be on tomorrow talking about the tonic jukebox. And I'm really excited about that because that's another created project by an artist that is just really helping to serve everyone that it communicates with. And that's really, really exciting. Michael, you've been a fabulous guest. It's really exciting to have had you here. And uh, thanks for, you know, just keeping coming back to us because we really wanted to hear you. And thank you for the, taking the time to spend with us. Okay, take care thank everybody. You thank, thank, you you for it. thank you all for being here. See you all tomorrow. Take care now. Bye-bye, bye-bye.